She's a silver lining, lone ranger riding through an open space. In my mind, when she's not right there beside me, I go.
Good afternoon and welcome to our new Charlton TV studio presented by DNEL Limited. As the addicts look to kickstart their season, Crew Alexandra are the visitors today here at the Valley as both sides look to get their first three points of the current campaign. Lots to come before kickoff. Nigel Atkins and Craig McGilvery. We'll head down memory lane with today's guest. We'll take a look at behind the scenes of training at Sparrows Lane. And we'll discuss Addict's new boy, Elliot Lee, who signed for Charlton on Thursday. So it is a, a very busy show. Delighted to say alongside the legend that is Alan Kerbishley, uh, we also have another Charlton legend in John Humphrey. Humps, how are you? I'm very well. Looking well. Love the jacket. Yes, I've had enough stick for it already. <laughs> Please do not adjust your sets. It is a pinstripe. I have to say, one of the funniest men, as well as one of the one of the best fullbacks I played with in in my career. 222 games for the club, in two spells. Right. I, I know you do and and did hospitality stuff. But what does it feel like coming back here on a match day here at the Valley? Oh, it's always you know it's a joy to come back here. This was where I enjoyed my football most of all, um, both spells that I had here. Um, and it's great, the fans are great here, very loyal. Um, I mean, what a stadium it is now. It wasn't like this when I first arrived in 85, um, the short spell that we had here. Uh, I think he was here for about six weeks and then we had to move to Selhurst and then on again to West Ham. But it's, it's a pleasure to come back here and as I say, um, I thoroughly enjoyed my time here. Okay, well, good to see you. Thanks for coming. We've got memory lane shortly. Curbs? That tan's still there, isn't it? <laughs> Looking well? Yeah, I'm good. Um, looking forward to the day, really, because you're right about kick-starting the season. We do, do really need it, don't we? Yeah. Um, you know, most people say any sort of win, no matter how we get it, but it'd be nice if we can put performance in and get the three points. It certainly would be indeed. Lots to get through. Let's start off with the gaffer, Nigel Atkins, who I spoke to a little earlier. Nigel, thanks very much for joining us. Um, a slight tweak from team selection from last week. What's the thinking today? It's good. Connor Washington's going to start the game just behind Jaden Stockley, which I think is important. Probably really the first real opportunity we've had to do that. With Kerky being on the left side, Jai Simi on the right hand side. You know, for me, we're getting the ball in the attacking third. Can we get more bodies in the box? Can we get more quality into the box? So, uh, you know, them two are going to part themselves up. Mindful that a very good crew side will want to play out from the back and they'll want to play through and they'll have a lot of possession. So we've just got to be mindful that we can actually cope with that as well from a midfield point of view. Talking of quality, how pleased are you to bring in Elliot Lee? Yeah, very pleased. Talented football player, isn't he? Obviously, um, you know, he's come from a higher division as well. He's got promoted from this division. He knows what it's all about. He trained with us yesterday for the first time, so you can see the ability he's got. And obviously we've got to, he's going to be on the bench today and we'll see how that can evolve over the, the coming weeks. You've had a free week, I'm sure as a manager it doesn't always come round, but you're delighted to do that. What, what have you worked on? How has it gone preparation-wise? Well, it's like everything. We, uh, you know, we lost the game very narrowly at the very end uh, last week, so we had an opportunity to do a debrief as we always do, see the lessons we've learned from it, get on the training ground. The attitude of the players has been bang on as it has been since I've been at the football club. We've had a good focus on the training ground. There's a good spirit about everybody, which is massively important important. Uh, we need that bond, we need that team sheet, we need that ability to keep driving everybody through and uh, we're focused and we're coming into the game full of spirit and um, good organisation on the training ground. That'll be reflected in the game obviously but um, you know we know we've got a good opposition that are playing against us who will be carefree in how they approach the game but I'd like to th think we've got a good focus about ourselves going into today's game. Good luck. Thank you. Positive as ever. Here is the team. Whether it be a, a 4 4 2 or a 4 2 3 1, interesting to see where Connor plays, whether it's alongside Jaden Stockley or just in behind. What's your thinking, Kerbs? Bit of both, I think. Um, look, it didn't work last week with Albie Morgan playing as a number 10, but I think Connor would be more adventurous, want to get in the box, especially if the two wide men can, looks as if they're going to get a cross in. That was a big problem, I think, that. Uh, Albie Morgan was playing there, but he was really a midfield player. Mm. He wasn't that number 10. He wasn't getting into the box. And we didn't look as if we were going to score, did we? Did you feel he'd be more comfortable in that position I think in, in, in the holding I think two. he mixed up. He likes to go in behind. And we know that Jaden uh, likes to face up. So Connor can go beyond him. Mm. So I think you'll see a bit of both. I think if Crew get hold of the ball and keep possession, as Nigel just mentioned, then I think Connor will drop in and try and help out. But when we're going the other way, We've got to get some more bodies in the box. There just wasn't enough people willing to get in that box last week. Mm. Elliot Lee, we'll come on to him. He's on the bench there. Sean Clare 
back as well. So does it feel like we're getting more and more options? Yeah, I'm looking at the bench and, you know, we said that last week, it didn't look that strong. No. And uh, especially compared to, to Wiggins, when they brought people like McLean on. Um, and I, look, look, the club's been trying to do business. I think there's Ariata has been mentioned this week as well and, and Elliot's come in. So still a couple of days left before that window closes and, and I still need Vidges and have a couple of signings coming in. Mm. I think, as we said last week, as a manager of a, a Premier League club or even a Championship club, you're waiting to this weekend and then you've got to make a decision. I've got everybody fit. I don't really need humps. You, you, know, like, you know, he can go out on loan. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. But do you, do you wait until the weekend's gone then, no, i.e. No, Monday? You have, or? To, you have to wait for that. Man You've already done the work. Yeah. And, the, and the, probably the manager's saying, look, let me get through this weekend. I get, I've got no injuries or, or sending offs or something like that. You can have him. But I've got to, get, I've got to make sure I'm not, I'm not going to leave yourself short. So, yeah, these next couple of days are going to be vital. Do you feel they're crucial as well, Humps, to, to, to build up the squad, to give Nigel the options to, if things aren't going well on the pitch? to to change things from the bench? Well, I mean, I've only seen them against Sheffield Wednesday, the first game of the season, so I, you know, um, I'm not sure how valued my opinion is, but for what it's worth, um, I think, as, as Kerb pointed out, um, I thought they were good for their point against Sheffield Wednesday, and I thought Sheffield Wednesday were a decent side, certainly first half. Second half, um, I thought Charlton were the better side, but it was worrying that I saw my first attempt at goal after 88 minutes, mm. and that is not enough, obviously, um, to keep you in this division, let alone get to the playoffs and let alone going up. Um, so changes are necessary if, you know, we need to score, first of all. I was impressed with Stockley in both boxes. I think he's, he's an, he's, he's, he is a very good asset for, this, for the club. Um, but we need people certainly feeding off him. Yeah, I think the Sheffield Wednesday point looks a good point now, considering how well they've done since then. Um, let's have a look at the table. Doesn't make great reading, of course, with us sitting in 21st. Crew below us on 22nd. Hums, I want to ask you then what you make of us over the, over the whole four games so far, but how important is it we get our, our first win of the well, season? Well, you know, if we're in this position with four games to go, <laughs> then it's a worry. But with only four games gone, you know, we're not in a relegation battle yet. Um, we're but not in terms, be, are we? No, but in terms, you know, today, just what it does for, for morale, um, team spirit and also to give the crowd a lift as well you know it's important you know you're looking at Charlton at home against Crew Alexander um, you know it, 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 it's a great fixture for us um, but the pressure is on and if you don't get a result today um, you know and a gap starts to appear and especially with the, the Gillingham game now that I think is cancelled other teams around us will be playing and the gap may even get even bigger and there's more even then more pressure to get to get a home result. Curves. Tough start, but we just only have to look at Blackpool last year. They lost five of their opening mm. seven matches. I think we know what they did, winning at Wembley in the playoffs yeah. in the end as well. What, what positives do you feel that Nigel can take for what he's seen so far? I, I know there aren't that many. Yeah, I think... Listen, I think he's got, he's got his mindset he's going to play with two wide men. So I think his problem is how to accommodate them. Uh, and give, give, the, give the side enough strength elsewhere to cope. Lots of teams are playing free in midfield. So oh, are, you going to get, are you willing to get out gunned in midfield to keep them two wide men? Who's go, are you hoping he's going to feed uh, Stockley and, and, and Washington today? Is that where Connor comes in and he has to drop, drop off sometimes? I think he will. Yeah. Uh, all depend if we get on top, I think he'll stay high. If it looks like we're struggling, he'll get the signal to go in there and help out. And I think he's that sort of player. I think he's happy to, to you know, do what's best for the team. I've seen him play wide. He gets back and everything else. But, Really, we've got to be on the front foot, and I'd like to think that with the two wide men and Connor getting in there, that, that perhaps Albie and, and, and Watson are hold. Mm. And we get some more bodies in the box. I, I remember a couple of crosses going in there last week, and there was no one in there. And then you look around, and, and they're, they're on the edge of the box. Is that a lack of confidence, or is that a lack of know how? I, I, I probably think it's a lack of know how at this moment. So I'm hoping that Connor will get in there and make the extra man around Stockley. Well, it's something that Nigel said he's been working on. Yes, been getting to the right positions, but not enough numbers. Exactly what you just said. Let's have a look, at, uh, take a look at the rest of the fixtures in League One today, shall we? Uh, where is Burton? Burton played last night. I know the score was 1-1 between themselves and Cheltenham. The early kickoff currently between Rotherham and Doncaster. Rotherham 2-0 up at half-time there. Big spenders Ipswich 
still looking for their first win of the season. They host AFC Wimbledon. Sunderland against Wickham, Wigan against Portsmouth. Some big games today and curves with so many big clubs in this division. Uh, Humps mentioned it there. How important is it that we do start winning and don't get left behind? Yeah, I mean, as we walk around the pitch, John, mate, look at this stadium. Mm. And we started talking about other stadiums. Obviously, you've got, you've got Sunderland, you know, Portsmouth, uh, Premier League clubs not so long ago and, and you start looking at Ipswich who are having it tough at the moment so Sheffield Wednesday I mean there's massive clubs in this in this league listen we've got to start putting a run together as John said I think that you know it's alright perhaps after four games having a bit of a gap but you can't continue you ain't going to make up 10 or 12 or 14 points I can't see that No. and, and, and the bigger clubs are pulling away so we need that result today hooker by crook I'd like to think it'd be a nice performance and, and we get the three points because of next week as John said you know we, we give everybody a lift as well I think it's a bit flat at the moment yeah. and you know as you're walking into the ground I think you're looking around at the fans and it's not upbeat and the only one that's going to change is some positive results absolutely um, that's enough about the present for now should we go to the past memory lane I'm all right. you ready I am <laughs> it's We've a gone... long time ago. Well, it is a long time ago. Um, you joined from Wolves in, in 85, went on to win Player of the Year three consecutive seasons. No other Charlton player have done that, 88, 89 and 90 as well. What, what are your memories of that time? Uh, what, the, the, from 85 to 90? When, when you or were the, the best player, player in the team? It's rather, it'd be conceited of me to say that I was the best player in the team. I mean, I, you know, I, I'm very proud of the fact that the, the fans sort of recognised and appreciated what I did. Um, and I didn't think I was, you know, you look back and I didn't think I was anything special, but I, I'm hoping that just with the sort of work rate and work ethic that I had, that the fans, as I say, appreciated that and, and the, as the rest, as I say, is history. So to get player of the year three times running is a real honour you know especially at a, cl a club like this and you know Keith Peacock I think Keith had it three times as well but I think there was a gap in between um, but my memories are here are great you know this is this you know I, I thoroughly enjoyed my football here of all the clubs that I had I started off at Wolves had a great grounding there with some of the, the you know the senior pros that I had and then Lenny brought me here in 85 and it just worked out well for me I was one of seven players to arrive that year and everything seemed to gel I mean it, you know I look at that and I look at this you know this is a new team you know lots of work going on in, in the summer about recruitment uh, but the same was in 85 when Lenny Lenny was in charge we had seven new players we all gelled and that year we, we gained promotion mm. um, so and, and, fa and it hit in that don't forget we left the valley in September sort of late September we left the valley to go to Sellers so there were lots of ups and downs but it just seemed to gel, and it, and it worked. Three years in a row, at some achievement now, isn't it? Absolutely, I was just thinking there, because I was in that, in that side, I was one of them. Yeah. I came in just before the seven, but uh, we must have been on the back foot if a defender kept getting Matt player of the year. Uh, eh? Bob got it once as I well. Got, so I got yeah, up to you yeah, once. Yeah, as an yeah, yeah. Yeah. About, uh, and we won promotion, so how do you want that? No, uh, I mean, yes, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, what happened. Lenny, Lenny done really well in the transfer market, and I came in before everybody, um, and he said, I'm going to bring some players in. But he did. He brought six at John Pierce and uh, George Shipley, uh, to Tomo. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, all these players Steve come Thompson. Steve Thompson. All these yeah, players yeah, come yeah. in first, first pre season. And we were training at the park, weren't we? Yes, we were, yeah. It's crazy. We were training at the park. And uh, it just all gelled. And I keep going on about the players I had as a manager. Always seem to get good lads. You know, very rarely was a bad one come in, and, and, and if a bad one did come in, he, he soon either bucked up or he was out. Mm. It was always a good mentality here, uh, an attitude, and everybody knew what was, what was needed from him, you know, on and off the pitch. Lenny, very good at that as well as yeah. yourself, Curbs. Uh, now, you scored three goals in your 222 games. One of those goals came in a 2 0 win at Leicester in the Four Members Cup in 1989. Really? I was told, and the other goal scorer that day was an up and coming young left back. Can't <laughs> think who that might have been. You won't believe it, it's one of the few games that the Charlton TV archive could not delve in, into and actually show. So, we've been robbed here, Hans. All not right. just yes, you, yeah, but yeah. me as well. One goal we do have, though, is against Middlesbrough in a 2-0 win at Selhurst in 1989. Let's have a look at it. I think it's fair to say it wasn't the most glamorous of goals, but every goal counts, doesn't it? 
Do you remember it? I do remember this. Like Talk us through it. And he scored three. So it's <laughs> and one we've already yeah, said we can't exactly, show you. Exactly, yeah, yeah. He got one a season, that's why he got players. <laughs> It was a bombing, Look, on, bombing my, on fullback job. In my defence, I only shot three times. <laughs> so I think I scored eight in total in yeah. my career. But, um, was... but, but now, I, you know, it would be yeah. Lee Byrne scored, assist, Humphrey. Yeah, you know, no, Lee scored, assist, yeah. Humphrey. Yeah, so but, now it'd be more but John you know, great pace. You could get him down the pitch. And, you know, if, if, he, if he had a tricky winger, you know, very rarely we get past him. Show him down the line, he, no one's going to beat him down the line. And uh, it, was, it was a good fullback. Yeah. And I was lucky that I had Peaky, Andy Peak, who didn't like to get forward. So if I did go forward, Peaky would sit yeah, in, sit for in you. for me. He didn't like that, to give no. a good tip at Christmas either. He was one of my pros. Who am I? <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> Andy Peak. Oh, Andy Peak. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's always yes, been yeah, like yeah. That. No, he's a good guy. Uh, harsh that a bit, Peaky. Look, you left for Crystal Palace in 1990, yeah. bringing some much needed money yeah. for the club. Yeah. Controversial, of course, with yeah, us being course, at, yeah. at Selhurst. Yeah. Talk us through that and how it happened and, and your thoughts. Well, it came as a shock to me because um, just prior to that, uh, I was linked with a move with Paul Williams to Queen's Park Rangers. We were going to be part of a, a million pound deal. Um, that fell through because I think it was leaked, believe it or not, it was leaked to the press. And I think Charlton didn't want clubs to know that they had a million pounds. So the deal fell through and I thought, and I'd, I'd just signed a new contract, so I was going to be here for another three years. I was 30 at the time as well, so I was happy with that. And then we were relegated, we lost 3-0 to Manchester United last game of the season. And then we were on tour, we were all away in uh, Australia. And then just prior to the flight on the way well. back, yes. Mm. Lenny called me over in the, the lounge at, uh, at Sydney and just said the club had, had um, accepted an offer from Crystal Palace um, and I was free to talk to them, think it over on the flight um, and I was free to talk to them if I wanted to on landing. Um, and given that the club had accepted the offer, I thought now is probably the time to go for me. As I say, I was 30. Um, they'd offered me, you know, I spoke to them, they'd offered me good terms. And I just felt that the time was just right for me to go. As I say, I was happy at Charlton, um, but the fact at that point that the club were happy to let me go, I thought now is probably the right time. Yeah. You, you returned to Charlton in 1995 when yeah. we were already back at the Valley. Was it always just a part of you that thought, I've got to come back and, and play at the, the new Valley because you yeah. did to play at the old Valley? Yes, no. Um, my contract was up at, at uh, Crystal Palace. We'd got relegated. There's a pattern for me, you, you notice. Did you get uh, player of the year? No, I didn't. <laughs> um, I think that might have gone to Gareth, actually. Gareth Southgate. I don't know what he's doing now. Um, Never so, it. yeah, so um, we got relegated and my contract was up. And then, and then Curbs and Gritty at that time, then uh, we met down at Dartford, a hotel mm. in Dartford. Posh. And then, um, yes, yeah, a wine and dined a hotel well, in there, yeah. <laughs> and then they offered me terms for a year, and then, then I took it. And then, um, and then after a year, that Curbs let me go again. So mixed feelings, really. <laughs> mixed feelings. <laughs> no, I did a year. Well, no, we didn't make the playoffs, and I always kind of knew that um, if we didn't make the playoffs, so I was on a year's contract anyway. And then we from really there, just missed out, didn't we? we finished yeah, we, yeah, we, we missed out. And Last then, game. Yes, yeah. And so that's. Football, I'm afraid, isn't yeah, it? You know, win it that game and I get a new contract. Or... So, Curbs, you, you played with Humps, you managed him as well. How important was he to the club? Well, I said earlier, I think that uh, he was a very quick fullback. You know, would give give his wide man a, a couple of yards, and he still wouldn't get past him. Um, but also, off the pitch, you know, off the pitch, as I said often enough, the lads off the pitch at this club, they were running it really. You know, and and that was vastly experienced and and proper professionals and and I think as players were coming into the club they was educated by the others this is what this is what we're about this is what we need and this is what we do mm. and uh, Humps and the likes of Bob Boulder and Walshy and, and people like that were instrumental in, 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 in us doing ever so well especially at Upton Park as I keep saying. Mm. And did you feel, find the question then, did you feel it was almost just right for him to come back, for you to bring him back, yeah. even if it was for only that one yeah. year? and not just for football reasons. As I said, you know, off the pitch, around the training ground, did the same thing with Powley. 
you know, bring them sort of players back who, who love the club, understand the club, and can educate the other guys who's, who's just come in or who's, who's in the team at the time. Mm. Kurt, um, Humps, that's it. Um, we couldn't find any other goals, unfortunately. Plenty of cysts, as They're I say. They're all out there. <laughs> They're all, all out there. there. If you check. Well, listen, great to have you with us today. Um, and we look forward to the game and hopefully you can give us a, give us a win a little bit later on. Uh, club news now. Uh, and let's start with the news that our game, as we've already mentioned, against Gillingham, initially set for Saturday, September the 4th, that's next Saturday, has been postponed after we received three international call-ups. Connor Washington has been called up by Northern Ireland, Chris Gunter by Wales, and congratulations to Hadi Gandor, who has been got a first call-up to the Lebanese national team. We'd like to wish good luck to all three on their international duty. Well, those three weren't the only addicts to receive an international call-up. Three academy starlets also received the call. Ewan Williams, pictured here, has been called up by Northern Ireland under-19s. Ryan Vigors by Wales under-19s. And James Beadle by England under-18s. Well done to all and also the hard-working staff as well. Good luck there. OK, well, it was an emphatic start to the season for Anthony Hayes' under-23 side. The Addicts cruised to a 7-0 victory at Oakwell over Barnsley, including this goal from Mason Burstow. Now, it comes after an incredible 25 passes. Humps, I'm not going to ask you to count them all, but that's some team goal, isn't it? That is. Um, and back to the keeper and out again. Patience. It is, but it, it's it's about what you do with the ball. It's no good having possession if you you know if 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 at the end of it there's no end product. Um, and but this is Charlton, you know. This is what you know. Well, this is, the way, the, this is the way the kids. <laughs> yeah. This is the way the, the kids are getting educated. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, and this yeah. is the way the, the the game's going. Yeah. There's nothing wrong in going a bit more direct or positive if you like but I think once you get into that final third the thing has to quicken up it can't you've got to be more offensive you can't keep going backwards and square you've got to start perhaps forcing the issue and that's my only gripe about some of the football being played now yeah Charlton yeah. TV subscribers can watch all the goals on the club's websites or the Charlton TV app if you don't have the subscription you can purchase an annual pass for £60 or a monthly pass for £6.50. Now, here is an exciting one for supporters who can't make it to the Valley. You can now buy and read the club's official Match Day programme, Valley Review, from abroad, as we have made it available on the Match Day Info app. This year's programme has been revamped following the appointment of Benji Nurek as editor, and you can get today's programme on the app now in time for today's game. Now, Charleston Athletic Women's first ever professional game was set to take place in the FA Women's Championship tomorrow against Lewis. Unfortunately, it's been postponed due to a number of individuals within the Charlton Women's Team camp testing positive for COVID-19. It means our first game is next Sunday against Coventry United and you can be there and be a part of history. Adult tickets for the game at the Oakwood in Crayford are priced at £10, while concessions are £5. The next game that fans in the UK and Ireland can watch live on Charlton TV is our Papa John's Trophy Group O match against Crawley Town on Tuesday, August the 31st. Live stream match par price passes are priced at £10 and can be purchased by visiting cafc.co.uk. Remember, Charlton TV will be providing match-only coverage for that one. OK, right, because we have to. Let's take a look back at last week's game, shall we? It wasn't actually as bad as, as perhaps some people were saying, Curbs, was it? But at 80 minutes, you were saying, look, I take nil-nil here. Yeah, it was a good game, actually, end-to-end, -end, very open. But uh, they looked the more threatening. You know, they scored the most important goal, the first one. And uh, we couldn't respond. And, and as John said earlier, you know, the, the, the attempts on goal and, and uh, our attacking play wasn't good enough. Mm. And uh, against a good side... This is McLean going through. Against a good side who you expect, I expect them to be up and in around it with, with the funding. I mean, they're talking, of, they're talking about bringing more players in this weekend. They've already brought lots in, haven't they? And, uh, you know, so... They'll be up there, Wigan, won't yeah, they? I mean, yeah. Pumps, look, this is the second goal chasing yeah. the game. How difficult is it to chase a game when you've not started the season well and you're feeling well, a little bit tired as well? Um, you know, you may as well lose 2-0 as 1-0. 
you know, uh, if you're chasing, you know, we've all been there. Um, but what we have to be careful of is sort of divisions appearing within the team. You know, when things aren't going your your way, you know, you can get forwards and midfield players looking at defenders and saying, well, look, you're not doing your job. We've just conceded two. And defenders are looking at forwards and midfield thinking, look, you're not scoring goals. So the pressure is always on us. On us. So, you know, when times are tough, you, you know, and we experienced it through that those five years that we had in the old Division One, where you were going to have, you know, tough, tough spells where you were not winning, but you have to stick together. It's where the character comes yeah, in and you have spirit, to stick together. Mm. You know, the blame factor goes out of it. You know, we all win or we all, you know, lose as a team, um, but you just got to stick together. OK, well, a player that was in form last week was Craig McGillivray, and I spoke to him a little bit earlier, pitch side. Craig, thanks very much for joining us. It's been a, a week without a game. I'm sure you're dying to get out there and play today. But what's training been like this week? Yeah, it's been it's it's been positive, albeit results haven't been how we want them. But we've looked at what we can do to improve. We've looked at things we've done well in games, um, and like I say, it's been a positive week. And everyone's itching to get on the football pitch and get three points today. What are the positives to take out so far this season? I think. I think despite not scoring as many goals as we want, I do think that we are getting into certain areas. We're just not maybe getting enough people into the box where balls are going into. Um, maybe we can be a bit quicker in terms of our build-up play um, and getting into these final thirds and maybe having a few more shots. Um, sometimes you're not going to get the perfect position to have a strike at goal and score a goal. and It's those little things that we've been working on, looking back on and trying to sort of see the positives because I think sometimes when when you are on a run like we are at the minute it's very easy to go oh it's all doom and gloom um, when there is certain things we're doing in, in games that are they are positive. Talking of taking shots you certainly had a lot of shots <laughs> last week anyway a man of the match performance and deservedly so despite the result how pleased were you with your performance? Yeah I didn't even know I got it until I went in the dressing room and yeah it's, it's, it's nice um, when you do make those types of saves I think on the whole, as a goalkeeper, the quieter the afternoon you have, um, it, it's generally better um, because it means that everyone's defending very, very well. Um, but ultimately, we didn't get the result we wanted to, and it continued this uh, this not ideal start that we've got to the start of the season. Mm. Just on a sort of personal level, but obviously it's connected with with being here at the club as yep. well. You, you talked last week in the match day program about how quickly you've settled in, yeah. what do you put that down to? I think it's the, the sort of ethos that the manager installs in, 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 in the dressing room, um, the group of lads we've got, they're a great bunch of lads, I said it in the programme and it is so true, I literally, the first day I came in I felt like I'd been here months um, and I do feel that that will stand us in such a good position throughout the season because there will be times where we will be under the cosh and if everyone's fighting for each other it can get you over the line and ultimately when you speak to a lot of players and they talk about some of the most successful times they've had in their football careers it is, it, they de there's generally a correlation between a, the good dressing room and the, the close-knit group and doing well in the season. You took time last week to respond on social media to the fans as well. I've got to be honest with you, if I was still playing I, I wouldn't be on social media myself <laughs> but how important do you feel that was? Yeah, I think I think it's one of them. Um, it was interesting actually because I think the the social media thing you see a lot of negativity in it, and I do think there is an awful lot of negativity in social media that, in social media now. But I don't know. I just I just I, I seen something come through to me. And I thought I can't just sit there and ignore what's been said um, because no one's happy with it. No one is happy with how we started the season. We don't want to be in the position we find ourselves in at the minute. In an ideal world, we'd have four wins out of four. Um, but it's not through lack of hard work. We're not doing it on purpose. Of course we're not. We all, when we win football matches, we want to be sitting at the top of the league and getting the club promoted at the end of the season. Um, but if we keep as positive as we can do, keep doing the right things, it will turn. It's only a matter of time. Good luck today and keep up the performance of last week as well. Thank you very much. Curbs, I think it's fair to say it's not been the easiest of starts for Craig, has it? But he was superb last week, wasn't he? Yeah, and, and, and let's be honest, I mean, it's a, it's a position where, you know, it, you make a mistake and, and it's, it's publicised, it's glaring, especially if it leads to a goal. Um, but I think 
last week's performance will give him a lot of confidence. It's difficult coming in, you know, this is early doors, he's coming through the summer. But he had to deal with some decent crosses, he got himself there, he came for crosses as well. I think he's comfortable on the floor uh, when the ball's played back to him. And I think that what he was saying there is that as a group they still believe they're good enough and, and strong enough and they just need to get off to a, a bit of a winning three points and they can take it from there. But he made some really good saves and he had to really because there wasn't, wasn't much going the other way for us. No, there certainly was and talking to him as well, he, you know, we talked about what this club needs, it's characters and good lads and he certainly came across that way. And as you can see here in the EFL, you know, he's one of, cl clearly one of the, the top goalkeepers. Obviously, you don't really want to be seen being worked all the time, but he's having a bit of everything, isn't he? He's, he's a good shot stopper. Yeah. He looks decent on, on the ball with his feet as well. It's a worry, isn't it, that, that, that you know, defenders and uh, goalkeepers are getting man of the matches. You know, it's, um, you'd like to <laughs> hopefully get your centre forwards up there and, yeah, and get them to get they it. They move but very quickly, don't they? Ben Amos went yeah, yeah, yeah. and they move very quickly and I think a lot of people were surprised that, that Portsmouth allowed him to leave. Yeah. I think he was out of contract or whatever but they allowed him to leave and uh, obviously the recruitment, once it happened with Ben, bang, they went and got it done very, very quickly. He's on standby for the Scotland squad next week and he's been in and around the squad for, for a period of time. Do you think he's good enough for, for international play? Yeah, yeah I do. And I, and I think that, you know, it's always difficult coming into a new club um, and it's a little bit easier, I think, as a, as a player, outfield player, because you've got other people surrounding you and, and, and helping you out. And as I say, mistakes ain't so vital. He's, you know, he got criticised, I think, for a goal up at MK Dons and uh, we were chasing the game for the second goal. So, yeah. But, you know, he kept us in the game at the weekend, last weekend. Uh, let's hope he ain't as busy today. How important is a, a good keeper? It's, it's an obvious question. Humps, but you know, as a, as a fullback, I'm thinking of Big Bob, and now I'm thinking of just yeah, like him no. laughing all the time. But but yeah. <laughs> on yeah. the pitch, how important is a good goalkeeper? Oh, you know, they a good goalkeeper will get you 15 points a year. You know, like I just pointed out there, some of the things that, that was uh, pulled off there. Um, you need it. You know, they instill confidence in your back players. You know, if they're vocal, um, if they're larger than life characters. We spoke about Bob Bob Boulder. Um, but we've, you know, the club have got a good history of, of, of producing good goalkeepers, and they're unfortunately they're all out there, but they're not playing for us. You know, they're all gone to um, when they leave us. They all go to bigger and clubs that are, you know, in in higher divisions. So um, our history of, of goalkeepers is really good here. But um, uh, no, as a, as a defender, you know, you know that if if they get past you, there's still another line of defence mm. in in your goalkeepers. And uh, as I say, they're worth, you know. Goalkeepers are now are going for millions and millions. You know, I think they're worth as much as strikers, yes, yeah. to be honest with you, yeah. because what they do down there, it's just not as glamorous yeah. as what the no, goal absolutely. scorers do. It, no. Sticking the ball in the back and, of the and net. There's one in position, Scott. That really you have to have a number one. You know, there's no changing. You know, that's that's your that's your keeper. You can change your outfield players and mix and match, but that's your keeper. I totally agree. But tell uh, Mikel Arteta that one. Moving <laughs> swiftly on, uh, Craig mentioned it was a busy week at Sparrows Lane and then Charlton TV went behind the scenes. Let's take a look.
Yeah, Hums, it looked like the, looks like everyone's very focused ahead of today and, and rightly so. How did you sort of prepare tactically but mentally as well? Going through a bad period, going into the next game. Yeah, uh, how did I prepare? Um, I used to like to switch off actually before a game. So once the managers had their say and everything like that, I used to like to read uh, or do a crossword and then and then try to clear everything and then just prior to coming out, then focus on a game. Um, when you're going through a bad spell, that, that, that's a tough one to do. I think. As, as young players, as players, I think if you are going through a bad spell, you just need to do the basics right. You know, if, if that means just, a, you know, the first touch and a simple pass, just to get your confidence back, you know, and, and then from there you can start to build again. But it is tough when teams, you know, there's no player out there, you know, regardless of where you are in the league and all players, they are professionals and nobody goes out there to have a bad game. And every, play, every player that's out there is a professional wants to be the best player on the pitch. And sometimes it just doesn't, it doesn't happen. Sometimes you're trying too hard and it just doesn't work for you. Um, but you've just got to, you know, <laughs> the, the more experience you become, so the more games you play, um, you know, you, you're less likely to have those bad spells and you know how to address them when they do come along. Absolutely. I'm just trying to think if Brownie ever did uh, a, a, a crossword. <laughs> you know what, what, what about a free week for you? I and mean, How important was it in terms of would it yeah. be double sessions? Would yeah. you be working on tactical or the mental side? I don't think the double sessions, but I'll, I'll have been concentrating on uh, the attacking third. Because I think, I think we've been quite strong defensively. I know we're not won a game, but I think we've been quite strong. Individual mistakes. Yeah, or, haven't they, um, goals. it's obviously because we haven't got anything the other end that we've been on the back foot. But I'd have been the attacking third, and I think Nigel would have spent as much on that as, as probably recruitment this yeah. week. He still would have been doing the recruitment. What I'm looking for today is the first couple of touches of certain players. Do they turn with the ball and be offensive, like it goes into midfield player, it goes into Connor? Does Connor's first touch take him back, or does he turn? If we start turning, that means there's confidence there. If it goes backwards and square, then we're waiting to see what happens. Let's talk about one player who might just do that if he comes off the bench. That is Elliot Lee. He signed on Thursday and we can see him. There's the old guy next to him. Yeah. I've never seen him before in my life. He's Rob Lee, Charlton yeah. legend. I mean, Elliot looks happy, but Robert looks even more happy. He looks he? delighted, yeah. doesn't yeah. he? A bit of trivia for you guys. Um, only one other father-son duo represented the Addicts previously. Can you name them? Peacock. Peacock? Indeed. Curbs, you want it? Yeah, well, you I signed his son, that's what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need inside info. Yeah. <laughs> Look, he could be a great signing in his own right, though, couldn't he? Because he can, you talk about the attacking yeah. third. He can play anywhere across that attacking third. Obviously, Nigel, this week, if, if Ariato is on the radar as well, he's looking at that midfield. I think he's happy with his back four, especially when Perlton gets back, so he's, he's got cover. And I think he's got his wide men. He's obviously happy, happy with Stockley. He's got to fill in them attacking mm. areas, midfield. They're coming though, aren't they? Absolutely. I, th I you know, I think that them, the the number ten, if he's the player number ten, or Connor, or another midfield, he's obviously looking in that area yeah. for Elliot to come in and um, Ariata to be on the radar. Let's remind ourselves of the team lineup, shall we? Starting with the Addicts, whether it's a 4-4-2 or 4-2-3-1, we'll have to wait and see. Connor Washington, the only change. Alvi drops into midfield, Elliot Lee, and Sean Clare back on the bench as well. He's back fit. So uh, hopefully we get a clean sheet and do well going forwards. Let's have a look at the away side. Now, Crew, despite them scoring a very late equaliser here last season at the Valley, I have to say were absolutely superb. Mikhail Mandarin scored 14 goals. That was his best uh, scoring season, 11 of those in the league. They are a very good footballing side and, 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 and very underrated humps. They're one of those teams that many will think we should go and beat. They're coming here, but actually they can play. Well, yeah, both sides have had a, you know, a difficult start to the season. Um, uh, but you've, got, you've just got to you know, believe, have belief in the, way, in the system, the way that you play. And just hopefully, you know, um, the results start to go your way. But, you know, when you look at today's fixture against Crewe, um, we're at home, you know, a home support in a lovely stadium. You know, if our season is to, to start, it needs to start mm. today, really. They've lost both their away games so far, not scored. Mm. You know, this is a team now we need to start on the front yeah. foot against, isn't even, it? Even if we wasn't in the bottom four with them, 
this is a this is a, a team you're looking at that we've got to take the foot. If we've got any ambition of, of being promoted, we've got to beat crew. I know it sounds you know a bit pompous, I suppose, but we've got to beat crew. You know that's it, isn't it? That's the bottom line at home today. But as you've said earlier, you know teams do enjoy coming here. They look at the stadium, they look at that pitch, and they think, oh, this ain't bad. And if they're a team that can knock it about and enjoy possession, then it could be an interesting game for us. How, how important, final one before I throw to comms, how important will the fans be today? Because well, they, 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 they've been superb, but I, I thought at the end of the game last week, they just turned was, a bit and I thought was, yeah. was harsh on the yeah, players were working hard. That was disappointing, and I think, honestly, they probably regretted it after they've done it, but that is the frustration here at the club at the moment, because we are playing the likes of crew, no, no disrespect. Yeah. But I think the, the genuine Charlton fan will be desperate for them to do well today and get behind him. I'm sure they will. The, the, the ones that are here, and obviously the noisy end, the covered end. Yeah. I think, as I say, I think they might have been a little bit embarrassed by it. It wasn't nice, was it? And as I'm said, they all gave their lot last week. No one, no one shirked it. Perhaps it wasn't good enough. Yeah. But they all put a shift in. Absolutely. Massive game here this afternoon. You can hear the Red Red Robin. The teams are out. Let's get to our commentary team ourselves of Terry Smith, Greg Stubbley, and Steve Brown. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Curbs. Thank you, John. And welcome, everybody, to the Valley. It's Charlton take on Crew Alexandra and uh, alongside me, Brownie.